everyone, welcome again to another 360 Timmy Minnesota. So this week, I thought I'd recommend, with the bank holidays approaching, some content to watch. Now, I'm not going to do a review show, I'm going to give you more of a tactic, because have you ever subscribed to things like Netflix, Prime, Apple TV+, Paramount, binge watched all the great box sets and then run out of things to watch and you think, oh, why am I subscribing to this channel? Maybe you should consider watching some foreign language drama. Now, bear with me on this. I know some people hate watching things with subtitles. I personally have never liked anything that's dubbed where you're basically watching something and there's an American actor voicing over a foreign language part. Cheers! <laughs> Cheers! You're so good. Hey, kids! Y'all all here! Dad! And it, I find it disembodied. It doesn't really match up. They're very good these days at making it match up as best as possible, but it just doesn't sound right. And I've always enjoyed watching those kind of things with the subtitles on. Not least because as you watch it, you kind of start to learn some of the language as it's translated on screen. And sometimes you work out the subtitles aren't quite matching up to what's being spoken on screen. It's been rewritten just for the purposes of drama to make it easier for you uh, in terms of translation. So as I said, it's a kind of tactic because what I found myself doing is watching too many block box sets in you know, a particular period. And certainly over the winter, television companies bring out an awful lot of dramas that they drop and of course you then consume it in a weekend uh, which in the old days you would have watched uh, a serial over a couple of weeks and you would have had to wait for next week's serial now we just sit there and watch it all in a day sometimes and of course then you've used it all up it's gone uh, what can you watch next so maybe have a look at the catalogue of foreign language drama now the irony is that i started watching foreign language drama by watching the english version of the killing the killing has a special place in television history it started the Scandi Noir genre. Scandi Noir is effectively content that's been made in Sweden, Denmark, and Norway. Uh, the Killing ran from 2007 to 2012 and launched the career of Sophie Grable, who appears in many Hollywood blockbusters and English dramas today. And it started a revolution. The US version I started watching in 2011, and I kept seeing based upon The Killing. Uh, from Denmark. So I watched a few versions. I didn't really get into The Killing for some reason. I need to go back and give that a go, actually. But I did find myself tuning in one Saturday night to BBC4. Now, the BBC in the UK on Saturday night on BBC4 shows foreign language dramas between 9 and 11. They offer two episodes up. And this show came along called The Bridge. And I started watching it and I was hooked. Because one of the things about Scanning Noir is the actual title sequence that gets you in to start off with. It's very cinematic, visually, and they use these really catchy tunes, these kind of um, melodic, haunting themes to drag you in. And I wish I could play the theme tune to the bridge, but I will get copyright strikes. So I'll put the name up on screen and you can download that from the music store and maybe play it whilst you're watching my video because it, it'll just get um, copyright striked and I have to take it off. Um, but I can show some footage from the bridge and it's a really fantastic story. The premise is that a dead body is found on the Orison Bridge, which is a huge bridge that connects Denmark to Sweden. The body's found halfway across the bridge so literally on the border of the two countries. So obviously the police officers from Denmark and Sweden go to site and they argue who's got jurisdiction. And then it turns out the body's been cut in half exactly on the border of the country. And of course, that's it. It's like, I'm hooked already. What, what is the story here? The lead of the bridge is Saga, who is the Swedish cop that's deployed. Uh, she's neurodiverse, uh, very interesting, complex character. And she's paired up with Martin, from Denmark. Now, Martin is played by Kim Bodia, who um, you'll know from Killing Eve. Um, he did two seasons, I think, of The Bridge before going on to Killing Eve. And uh, Saga is played really, really well by Sophia Helen. And that series, I utterly recommend to get you started on watching uh, foreign language drama because literally it was a template for dramas after that. Now, the interesting story about the bridge was it was screened in 174 countries in its original language, so a massive hit. But it spawned seven remakes in, in other languages, uh, particularly in the UK, 
There was a version called The Tunnel, which was a story between UK and France. A body found halfway through the Channel Tunnel. So you're getting the kind of overlay. Similar character, um, a UK British cop who has to work with a neurodiverse French version of the saga. Um, it was slightly turned on its head in other territories. Um, there's a good version available that's um, based in the USA and Mexico. There was also a Estonian Russian version, a Malaysian and Singapore version, and one I really liked, which was uh, De Pass, which was made between Germany and Austria by Sky. Um, it was also a show in Greece and Turkey and India, a fantastic success. And this really shows how these dramas are making a transition over to English language. Uh, but the originals are actually far, far better. Now, if you really like these dramas, they're totally free in the UK because Walter Presents is a stream of content with foreign language in mind that runs on Channel 4. It's been running since 2016. You can download it on the Channel 4 app. You can watch it on Channel 4 uh, occasionally as well. And there's an absolute vast amount of dramas from all across Europe. And they are, as Walter says himself, shows that have been mega successful in countries across Europe and around the world. And, you know, they're now for you to watch in Walter Presents. My name is Walter and I'm the curator of Walter Presents. I'm an obsessive finder of things. So I'm like a sort of slightly crazed library mouse. So when I get obsessed with something, I will stop at nothing until I find it. So when I developed this idea, I spent basically two years locked up in my living room, uh, ordering dramas from all over the world and watching thousands of hours of it. I mean, literally thousands of hours. The principle behind this is that we went out and chose dramas that are huge hits in their country of origin. So they've been watched by millions of viewers. They're critically acclaimed, they're often award-winning nationally and internationally. It's premium stuff, just as beautiful as the very best English and American drama that you're used to, but it's a lot more varied in terms of texture. It's like every weekend going to a different city in the world and spending a weekend in Buenos Aires, a weekend in Antwerp and one in Milan. That's quite an attractive proposition, I think. Drama has never been better, stronger, or more sophisticated than it is today. I think that drama is a new cinema. You can actually explore a story over 7, 10, 15, 20 hours, or over seasons. So it becomes a much more nuanced and sophisticated piece as opposed to compress everything in an 80-minute romp of uh, 3D glasses. And uh, this is the premise on Netflix as well. When you've run out of content to watch, start looking at some of the foreign dramas because there's quite a few on there to get you hooked. So with that in mind, I'd also come on to the second uh, foreign language drama that I really got hooked on. Uh, it's a political drama. Now, that doesn't normally interest me, but Borgen caught my eyes. Again, very catchy opening titles and theme tune. And the premise is that in Denmark, there's been a hung parliament for decades. So there is never a major party in control. And it's always uh, the major parties that have to fight for control and appoint what they call a states minister, a prime minister. Uh, but in this show, it comes to the kingmaker, I suppose you could call it, the green, small green party, um, which is headed by the character Birgitta Nyborg, finds itself in, in a state where it can actually former government, but of course she has to be states minister, but prime minister. And this is going to be interesting because she has no majority. She's going to have to negotiate around to get her policies out there, and um, particularly being a green agenda, even more difficult. So the story wraps around her life, um, suddenly going from a small party leader with her family at home to being the number one job in Denmark, the prime minister, the states minister. And the supporting characters in this are absolutely fantastic. I have to say, Sidzi Babette Newsom, who plays Beginner Nyborg, is an absolute genius. She is fluent in so many languages. And what's great about Borgen is it does switch into English, into French, into Danish quite a few times. And you will not believe how well um, Sidzi Babette talks English. It is absolutely fantastic, very engaging. The central character after her is a spin doctor, Caspar Yule, played by Pilo Aspek. Uh, Pilau has been in many shows, Game of Thrones particularly. Um, in fact, many of the actors in Borg and you will actually see in a lot of English dramas and, and Hollywood films today because this launched their career effectively. 
uh, sorry, it follows the spin doctor who has a relationship with um, TV anchor Katrin Fosmark, who uh, heads the main news in Denmark on the, on the second TV channel. So you can see the link there, prime minister, spin doctor, television anchor, and then all the periphery there. Really good uh, set of seasons there. They're all, the original seasons are available on Netflix. And then Netflix actually made the final season that came out, I think about 10 years after the original. So you've got a great lot of content there. I highly, highly recommend that show to watch. So the last drama I'm going to recommend is a particular favourite at the moment. I really think it's absolutely fantastic. It's so well put together. One of the things I would always say about particularly Scandi drama is it's not just about the two characters and the overall plot. There's always some subplots and characters going on in the background that really make the whole piece. It's a real ensemble piece. But the primary premise of Young Royals I think is super clever. Imagine you are um, in line to the throne of your country, uh, you're a young lad, you're a bit of a delinquent and you're sent to a strict boarding school as punishment and when you get there you fall for another boy but you're in line to the throne, how's that going to work? There's never been a gay relationship before and this story takes that forward and as I mentioned it's not just about um, that aspect, it's also about class, it's also about the way social media works now. It really has got lots of themes. It is absolutely so well put together. The music, the cinema, the characters, uh, absolutely can't say enough about this show. So what binds this drama together are the two characters. Uh, Prince Willem, played by Edving Riding, who is a well-established Swedish young actor. And in his first acting role, a famous Swedish pop star called Omar Rodberg. And these two are absolutely fantastic together. There's a making of how they did the casting of these two and the chemistry was there from the start. They really bring it to life. But this is not just about a gay relationship. It's also about class. It's also about how social media affects um, particularly people in the public eye now. It's about the school itself having some traditions that are a little bit outdated. It's about other characters like a neurodiverse sister, other relationships. So there is a distant relative who also goes to school, is a bit older, but is um, in doing, he's got uh, issues with drugs and all kinds of things going on and um, lots of debt and really can't afford to be at the school. But, you know, it's all about how he appears class wise. I just can't recommend this drama enough. Please give it a go. It's absolutely so well put together. The music, the way it's shot, the character development, really, really great thing to watch. Um, you'll come away smiling, trust me. So there are my recommendations. Please do give it a go. Uh, subtitles are king. And some of this content, trust me, particularly from Scandinavia, I think is some of the best in the world. I mean, really, drama is the new cinema today. So, if you've got any comments on this week's episode, please feel free to contact me at 360timmy.com. As ever, please do subscribe and like and send me some comments. Always welcome. And you have a super day. Mm -hmm.